Learning Sickles build power because everyone who participates is a facilitator. That's why we're sitting in a circle. And so you see people standing up, but the acoustics in this space make it so that it's easier to stand up to get your point across. But everyone is an educator and everyone is a student in a learning circle. So they're really important because it takes concepts that might necessarily be abstract and makes them more specific so that we can understand them and have conversations about them. Well, basically we learned about waterfront justice and also, we learned about environmental justice, which is basically occurring in every borough of the Bronx, um, of New York, especially the Bronx, where I'm from. And they say that it involves racism and um, the income level of a per that a person makes, and we're trying to find solutions or ways to bring attention to people. You have to be able to talk about issues of racism. You have to talk about issues of classism, sexism. You know what I'm saying? These are pieces that are intentionally kept out of our curriculum. Even the teachers that actually want to share it, because they're so burdened down with trying to teach to test that they don't always have, you know, saying the space to be able to do that. So we really need space, you know, for community organizations to be able to step in and do that. We need space to where our young people can also be working with our elders, you know, in spaces to be able to learn that. So again, they may not get it in schools, but we need to also make sure that it's being provided. We'd like you to turn to and the fact that I saw people, you know, becoming and really like interest in the material that that's always a cool fact. That person, you know, can change the world for you. And, and we're all changing the world right now. We're, we're all taking matters into our own hands and we're all taking our future into our own hands and we're making the things that we want to see and we're all starting to educate. It's not just a like, white hippie thing, but there's been cancer, there's been obesogens, which are things that help keep people fat. I never really thought about uh, green spaces and green infrastructure as being, you know, related to police policing and, you know, structures of your neighborhood and things like that. So I really learned how those two things tie together and how it really does affect a lot of uh, community members, especially low-income communities. So that's something I really learned today and it kind of, you know, put a different, you know, light in my head, I guess. There are a bunch of park spaces and green spaces and community spaces in our neighborhood and a lot of times police officers come there to, I guess, try to detain the crowd and they don't see it as a, as a hangout spot and it makes a lot of community members and you know especially a lot of minorities afraid to even hang out at these places so that's a way that it's you know kind of affected me it made me not want to go to parks made me not want to hang out at community um, spaces and things like that so you have folks in our neighborhood who are not waiting for me you know what I'm saying they understand where the elders are they understand where the young children are it's really us who really need to come together and take care of ourselves and hold other folks accountable but a lot of times when we do that you know, saying that's when the harsh enforcement starts coming. You know, whenever we try to take over spaces that we need to sustain ourselves, especially when climate change, you know, saying occurrences happen, that's what's criminalized. Also, they should stop racially profiling us based on different colors, like colors of our skin and stuff like that. And they're more of an authority to the park than helping us. And they abuse their power. We also felt like they were dictators. And keeping the area safe. Sometimes they still fear people. It's not young kids who own businesses. It isn't youth who pick up the trash. It isn't youth who create policies. But it is youth who will fill the ultimate, you know, what is it called, that word? Oh, my gosh. Youth will fill the ultimate burden of policies made by people who don't reflect their community. The health conditions that come from, you know, saying pollution, a lot of times are also specifically you know what I'm saying, um, not so much targeting, but our young people are susceptible to them, you know what I'm saying? Youth with lung capacity, you know what I'm saying, it, it inhabits, you know what I'm saying, neurological development. So when we look at our babies, you know what I'm saying, and our young folks, they're the ones who are dealing with the brunt of this besides our elders. 
So how youth can get involved in the climate change movement is they can scout out their local environmental organization. If you live in New York City, Uprose is a really great place in Brooklyn, and any of the organizations that have participated in today's Climate Change Youth Summit will really be able to be a great resource for you to get involved in your community. But it's really as simple as joining your local community organization that has the issues that you're you know, interested in and, and impacted by. It, it, you know, it helps you continue doing this work because it's a long battle and there are short victories along the way, but ultimately the goal is, is to um, have, you know, environmental and climate equity and justice amongst all communities, no matter where you're from, whether you're black, Latino, um, white, Asian, whatever it is, Middle Eastern, we want equal equality and justice for all communities.